Hi, this is Kevin from the Catholic Education Office Ballarat and I'd like to welcome you to this short video about systems thinking. The purpose of this video is to learn what it is and in the following videos we'll learn how we can implement it and use it. Systems thinking sits along design thinking and computational thinking as one of the three methodologies underpinning the digital technologies curriculum. Systems thinking provides students with the tools to evaluate cause and effect relationships and the consequences of problem solving from multiple perspectives. They will wear multiple hats throughout this process such as innovator, designer, manufacturer, consumer, general and soldier. The systems thinking process guides students to undertake the due diligence to ensure that in solving one problem we don't create another. An example of a systems thinking challenge can be seen here. Antibiotics revolutionised medicine in the mid 20th century, providing a simple, pain-free and cost-effective solution to common infections saving countless lives around the world. In less than half a century, we now understand that over-reliance and abuse of antibiotics has created resistant superbugs leading to infection and disease we can no longer treat in some cases. Common infections easily killed only a generation back are again becoming a serious health concern. We require a sustainable healthcare solution to this issue that balances our immediate needs against our future threats. The introduction of the cane toad to Australia is another example of where systems thinking could have been used to avoid an ecological disaster. Unfortunately, there are examples of this the world over. According to ACARA, a system is an organised group of related objects or components that form a whole. Systems thinking is a holistic approach to the identification and solving of problems where the focal points are treated as components of a system and their interactions and interrelationships are analysed individually to see how they influence the functioning of the entire system. It requires students to understand systems and work with complexity, uncertainty and risk. Students recognise the connectedness of and interactions between people, places and events in local, wider and world contexts and consider the impact their designs and actions have in a connected world. Understanding the complexity of systems and the interdependence of components is necessary to create timely solutions to technical, economic and social problems. Systems thinking is not a new idea. We can see its roots as early as ancient Greece, where Aristotle wrote, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, to stress the need for synergy and alignment within a system over a disorganised collection of more efficient individual elements. To be a good systems thinker, we must understand that as free-thinking individuals, we still all exist and operate within a variety of systems. We are family members, residents, students, employees, taxpayers, supporters and the list goes on. Some of these systems we actively pursue and have influence and control over and others we just fall into due to factors such as our salary, age, gender and the like. Systems thinking is an ongoing process fueled by analysis and feedback undertaken at all levels at all times. But if all we ever did was sit around and look for improvements, we'd achieve nothing. We would find ourselves in a state of paralysis through analysis. Systems thinking needs to become an unconscious skill for students to use any time on the fly. For this to happen, we'll have to consciously teach many of the concepts and skills required in a classroom environment. If you are asking students to work on an ongoing or collaborative project, it is worthwhile as a teacher to hit the pause button no matter where things are and put systems thinking into action in a structured manner so students can then undertake these independently with a common understanding of key concepts and terminology. We need to remind students that through ongoing systems thinking, the outcome can be constantly improved and not let perfect get in the way of better. If systems thinking teaches us nothing, it should teach students that you will rarely find a solution that is everything to everyone. It is at this point that we remind ourselves of our purpose and goals and take the best steps to creating a solution. So how do we put this into action? When comparing it to computational thinking and design thinking, which are more prescriptive processes, systems thinking can be considered more of an abstract concept to use and teach students. In saying this, it contains common elements applicable to all scenarios that students must understand. So let's explore these further. Be clear on your goals. No matter whether you're trying to build a better mousetrap or solve world peace, 
Never begin the process without an agreed understanding of your purpose and appreciation of its value within the process. The purpose will drive you through the roadblocks and a sea of opinions that keeps you moving forwards towards a solution. Identify your systems. When trying to solve a problem, consider all the systems in which it exists and evaluate whether they are something you have a level of input or control over and how that might impact your decision making. Identify the stakeholders within these systems. Not all systems are created equal and you will need to identify the vital ones and the key players within them. For example, you may not need to get everyone on board with your new parent-teacher interview proposal as opposed to one or two people who have great influence beyond yourself. Resources. Resources is a very broad term in systems thinking and endless lists such as time, people, materials and more. No matter what you call them, we will further categorise them into two distinct groups. Tools. Tools are resources we would consider offering progress towards a solution. Barriers. Barriers are the opposite of tools and hinder or block progress. Understand that as our perspective changes, so too does our evaluation of barriers and tools. Analysis and feedback loops. True systems thinking never ends. It's a process of continual refinement and improvement. To enable this, we must provide students opportunities for internal and external feedback and processes of assessment and analysis. This ongoing analysis guides decision making and future direction. The upside of systems thinking is it provides a highly inclusive and holistic approach to exploring a challenge from diverse perspectives. This process, however, can lead you to a point of becoming completely overwhelmed as you drown in confusion trying to keep everybody happy. It's at this point that we need to remind students that the hunter who chases two rabbits will catch neither, and at some point you'll have to prioritise your goals and make some hard decisions which will upset one group and simultaneously reward another. This is why there is multiple methods of critical and creative thinking within the curriculum. They complement each other as a suite rather than as a group of individual tools. Be sure to check out our other courses and thank you for your time in viewing this.